Now I can actually have access to it. I can get to that back corner of my house and clean that up. It's an area that hasn't been seen in years. I don't have any rat infestation. There's no flies out there. I don't have to worry about bleaching that side of the house every single week. An RV encampment belonging to one man and his two teenagers has been moved after numerous calls and emails to the city. When we first moved in here um, almost six months ago, my wife was like, I don't know if I feel safe. This is what it looked like six weeks ago when we reported about Gerald Gutierrez and his effort to get the city to take action. Now all that remains is this shed and box truck. The issue is what happened here for the past three, four years going to happen over in that block over there. The man and his vehicles were towed less than a block away. I was actually thinking that we were going to move towards a more uh, net positive gain in what happened. In fact, it just didn't pan out that way. In front of Jonathan Gibson's home, Gibson says he's worried about the trash buildup and safety. If there wasn't consistent trouble happening, if the cops weren't consistently here or the ambulance wasn't consistently here, it probably would be less of an issue. A fire truck and ambulance came and took a teenager away while I was talking with the man in the RV. Are you going to move? He declined an on-camera interview and didn't want to be named, but he did say that safe Section 8 housing is hard to come by. He says he works with caseworkers and is trying to find a permanent home. The city of Seattle tells me their HOPE team plans to offer shelter and services to him this week. It's still a winning situation for everyone in the community. A winning situation that came with months of unanswered emails and phone calls. Calls. Last time we had this interview, the first person that was that said that she was going to reach out and do something about it was uh, Representative Tammy Morales, but I have yet to hear back from her. It's been exactly six weeks since I requested an interview with Council Member Tammy Morales. I requested another one three weeks ago and again today. Each time I was told she was unavailable for an on-camera interview. What? is the point of speaking out and saying that you're going to do something if we're not going to hear from you or if it's going to be impossible to get a hold of you. Where are you going? Residents now wondering if the 72-hour rule will apply or whether they'll be waiting years for help.